Good morning. morning. And welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Holy Comforter on this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Our service today begins on page 355 in your Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, where's the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plenteous land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where's the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, 
and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing hymn 555.
Following the reading of the gospel, all children are invited to follow our children's chapel volunteer through the door for children's chapel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always pleasing to you, O God, our Redeemer and Savior. Amen. I really like our collect today. It says, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. Bring forth in us the fruit of good works. It's all good, but the piece about increasing in us true religion figures most prominently into my thinking right now. I love fancy dinner parties. I love attending them. I love hosting them. Before I came here, I would throw them for the president of our university, and it was fun. I like tasting the food. I like seeing everyone getting dressed up and having a good time thinking about what colors on the tablecloths, listening to music, all sorts of those different pieces. Now, our gospel lesson today includes Jesus giving the Pharisees some tips, some rules for a dinner party. It seems, in some ways, very Emily Post or Martha Stewart. Invitations with an RSP, RSVP deadline. You must wear proper attire, such as black, tail, black tie or tails. Napkins on the left, silverware placed from the outside in based on how you're using them, place cards. Except that's not quite right. There are no place cards. And the people Jesus is saying must be included on the invitation list are not the ones that would be pre-approved on any society list. They would not be in our own address books. We are not to invite friends and family. We are not to invite anyone in the hopes of a return invitation. We are to go out and find those who we do not know, those who might make us uncomfortable, those who are at the bottom of the social ranking list. And it does not stop there. We're also given etiquette for our attendance at parties. We're to sit at the worst seat. We're to be grateful and not to expect, should we be asked to move somewhere better. We're to practice humility and never assume that we are the guest of honor. It is hard to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind instead of our friends and family. It is hard to be grateful about sitting in the worst seat furthest from the action and to do so with such humility that it would be a true surprise if we were invited to move to a better one. In July, Pope Francis made waves by inviting 200 homeless people 
to dine at the Vatican. He opened the doors and offered hospitality. The meal, prepared by chefs in Na from Naples, was served by Cardinal Giuseppe Bertello and members of the Circle of St. Peter. The people were bussed in from all around to have this meal. Now, the reaction of the internet posters on the news websites ranged from thrilled about this gesture of hospitality to complete disdain, calling it a publicity stunt and simply an empty gesture that wouldn't have any real impact. I suppose the naysayers could be right. Those 200 people got a good meal, and then they were bussed right back out of Vatican City into the surrounding seats. No formal provisions were made for long-term assistance or change that night. But does that really make it an empty gesture? I don't think so. I think it was a start. I think it was a true gesture of hospitality, and I think it was a sign of true religion in practice. Now, the Pope is not likely to get a return of 200 dinner invitations. He will get as much criticism as accolades for this act by the social and political elite. But he did it. He's making a gesture and a statement because true religion is expressed in thought, action, and humility. It has grown in doing the anti-Emily Post thing. And in case the gospel is not clear enough on its own, our reading from Hebrews also has lessons for living and growing as Christians in true faith. Remember those who are in prison, those who are being tortured, let marriage be held in honor by all. Keep your lives free from the love of money. And the part that relates back to our talk of humility and hospitality, do not neglect to show hospitality to, neighbor, to strangers. Hospitality and humility, I think they go hand in hand. It's easy to offer hospitality to those who can serve you better, those who make you feel important or special or loved, and while that can be hospitality, it's not necessarily selfless or humbling. We all learn more about ourselves when people offer the occasional constructive criticism instead of simply always telling us we're awesome. Likewise, we learn humility by expanding our sense of hospitality to be focused on those who are not at the top of our friends and families list. It is by putting aside the traditional trappings of importance, of money and power, and all things Pollyanna, that we are afforded the opportunity to truly grow, and as a result, to find in ourselves an increase in true religion. Because this is a countercultural position, it's not always easy to pursue or understand. Our elected leaders rarely open the doors and invite in the unwashed masses. And Pope Francis's dinner would not have garnered so much attention if it were a common activity amongst our religious leaders. I'm a new soccer coach this year, and I'm trying to corral 10 four-year-olds. At the first practice, all but one declared to me that they were awesome soccer players, despite the fact that none of them have ever been on a soccer field before. Now, we often encourage our children to have self-confidence first and humility second. It seems like that makes them stronger, more confident, and capable. But I assert here that understanding who we are and why we are and what makes us valued by asking God to increase in us humility, hospitality, and true religion through searching for a way to make that happen we will find developed in ourselves a grand and strong foundation that will be rivaled by none. The author of Hebrews gives us a roadmap to increasing our true religion. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. By looking at our leader, Christ Jesus, by imitating his faith, his humility, his hospitality, we too can hope to live in confidence in the love of God. By opening our hearts and minds and wallets and doors to those in need, by setting the table and inviting in everyone we see and not just those we already know, we will grow in faith and understanding, and we will grow 
and true religion. Many in this community were surprised by the sudden closing of Loaves and Fishes this week. Some are desperate, some are devastated. There was no warning, and countless people in this county have depended on this agency for years, not to mention the grief so many of the founders and advocates and volunteers must be feeling. At this point, there are a lot of questions about the closing and the statements issued, questions that will probably never be answered. And the reality is that many of these questions need not be answered, because that's not the heart of the issue at hand. What is most pressing is that a huge gap has opened, causing our neighbors, friends and strangers alike, to be hungry. Knowing why there is newspaper covering the locked door of the building will not feed those who need it most. So we are being called not to gossip or speculate, but to come forward with radical hospitality. To come forward and invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind to our table. To imitate Christ's call to action for the sake of lifting up those around us and nothing more. Plans are being laid for how to help. Allied Churches and Salvation Army are already increasing their offerings of food boxes and meals. United Way is continuing its food drive that it just started that was meant to support loaves and fishes. We're discussing a countywide commitment to an immediate collection effort. And a group will be meeting here at Holy Comforter later this week to talk about how and where to best disperse food to people in need. People are coming together across government, nonprofit, schools, denominations. Hebrews tells us, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. This community suffered a blow this week, but if we all join together, do good and share what we have, we will emerge even stronger and more compassionate and we will indeed find true religion growing inside us. Because in doing all of this, in re-envisioning the perfect dinner party, taking the worst seat, inviting the lowliest in society, remembering those imprisoned and tortured, stepping in to serve and feed those who need it most, we are expressing true religion and growing in a true understanding. We are not seeking accolades and hanging our success on our ego. We are simply doing what comes naturally. When we truly understand and are content in the knowledge of God's presence, when we truly believe that we are blessed by God, we will find Jesus' words to be more than sufficient praises and assurances that we too will exercise a growing true religion of humility and hospitality. For Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.
kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. To the Father and the Son, he has spoken the will of God. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael, Chip, and Anne, the bishops of our diocese, and for all bishops and other ministers, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we remember today the Diocese of Saldana in Southern Africa. In our own diocese, we remember St. Paul's Smithfield and San Jose Mission Smithfield. Lord, in your mercy, Here. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember today all people involved in conflict and war, especially Mark McLaughlin, Joshua Trumbull, and Chris Strong, and all others who have requested our prayers. For Pat Boyd, Buster Brown, Carl and Rebecca Coley, Sam Jones Moore, Sean Toom, Tyson Swain, Jackie Connor, Mildred Nowell, John Tola, Anne Ingram, Monica Adams, Alan Champion, Jim Carr, Jean O'Connor, Jackie O'Donnell, Ann Duke, Dave Forsyth, John Peluso, Roger Young, Ramona Simmons, Aaron Atkinson, Jackie Winslow, Margaret Egedenison, Rod Reinecke, Jamie Adams, Matthew Strong, Martin Shaw, all residents of rehabilitation and assisted living facilities and their caregivers, and anyone else whom you wish to name either silently or aloud. Yeah. 
Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Remembering today all who died this week in service to our country, especially Ricardo Young, Kenneth Clifford Alvarez, Michael Dean Hostetter, George A. Banner, Jr., and for anyone else whom you wish to name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As you may have noticed, Adam is not here today. He is um, doing continuing education this week. He's in Brazil. He shall, should be back uh, next Sunday, so we will welcome him at that time. Following the service, we will have a coffee hour, lemonade stuff on the lawn, so please join us, especially anyone who is visiting or new this week. As you'll note in your announcements, in your bulletin, the men's breakfast is starting back up and will be resuming this Thursday. So please mark your calendar. Um, you may notice we have the food basket up here. The first week of the month, the first Sunday of the month is Food Basket Sunday, and we bring it here. There have been some questions about what do we do with that, especially now, as I mentioned, that Loaves and Fishes is not running. We have traditionally alternated between taking it to Loaves and Fishes and Allied Churches. This month it will definitely go to Allied Churches. <laughs> There is right now a response that is being put together, as I mentioned, and we are trying to figure out the best way to proceed from here to, to kind of fill the gap. But at this time, all of, all of our donations of love and labor will go to allied churches for now. Um, next week, actually, why don't you do this? Good morning. 
for those of you that were here last week, you heard me mention about the golf tournament that we're having at Quarry Hills on October 19th to benefit the Newland Partnership. We need to get golfers signed up as soon as possible. Sponsorships are, you know, they're easy to get. It's getting people to play golf that's been difficult, and we really need all we can get. So if you could just see me after church, I'll be in the back of the church. I'll have sign-up forms. Even if you don't play, just give it to somebody that you know that does play. I need all the help I can get to get it, make sure that I have enough teams. And also, the crop walk will be held the first Saturday in October, which is October 5th this year. And the start and finish is at Holly Hill Mall. It's a 6.2 mile loop, but we have donation envelopes and we're recruiting walkers and we need sponsors for walkers. So if, you, if you're interested or if you participated last year, I also have those uh, at the back of the church. So thank you. For those of you that have been following it, we have over the last month been trying to raise money to create an elevator um, at this church to make it more accessible. Today is the deadline for turning in forms and making pledges or, or immediate financial commitments. If you are interested in doing so and have not yet uh, had an opportunity, there are um, pledge sheets in the back as well as information packets and we can just, uh, your ushers can take those from you um, if you would like. Or you can send them to David for the, during the week. He will also be happy to have them. Next week, next week we go back to our 8.15 and 10.30 service times. There will be a ministry fair between services and after this service. Please contact Jenny if you have not already signed up. And there will be a rally breakfast between the services, which I have been told will be very delicious. So please come. Um, in two weeks on the 15th, we will start our Christian Ed Sunday school type programs in between the two services. We could still use a couple more teachers, so if you are feeling that call, please let me know. And with that, we now continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Good job.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the earth, through Jesus Christ, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper... He took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your body and blood. 
of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.